Hello, everybody, and good morning, good Monday. This is my last um, Monday devotion um, for the summer because life gets crazy at our house with kids running from one sport to another and vacations and just time with them. And so we are going to be wrapping up the book of, not the book, but the chapter of Hebrews 11 together today. And so if you have your Bibles and you want to open up to Hebrews 11, we're going to read verse 24 all the way through chapter 12, verse 1 today. We've been talking about the heroes of faith, and we learned that Abel showed his faith through sacrifice. And that week we talked about how it matters more to God not what we give, but why we give and the heart behind it, the heart that motivates our giving. And then we talked about Enoch and how he showed his faith through faithfulness. He lived 365 years and it says all those years he walked with the Lord and then he was no more. Then we talked about Noah and how he showed his faith through obedience. Abraham showed his faith through following God, even into the unknown, even when he had no clue where God was calling him to go. He was willing to go there. He was willing to obey the Lord. And then Sarah showed her faith with trusting, trusting, not just that God could do it, but that God would do it and trusting his timing and trusting his ways. And then we learned about Isaac and Jacob and how they passed their faith on. And then Moses, his mother, and how she showed her faith through letting go, through taking him to that Nile River, placing him there, lifting her hands and walking away. And last week we talked about, are there any of us that need to take something and lay it down at the feet of Jesus, take our hands off and walk away? Are there things that we've been holding on to, cares that we've been carrying that we need to give to him? The Bible says, cast your cares on the Lord. That word literally means throw them on God, throw them on God because he cares for you. And what are the others in the scripture? That's what we're going to read about today. Hebrews eleven twenty four. It says, By faith Moses, when he was grown, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to be mistreated with the people of God than to enjoy the fleeting pleasures of sin. He considered the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt, for he was looking to the reward. By faith, he left Egypt, not being afraid of the anger of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. By faith, he kept the Passover and sprinkled the blood so that the destroyer of the firstborn might not touch them. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land, but the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had given a friendly friendly welcome to the spies. And what more, verse 32, and what more shall we say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, and of David and Samuel and the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms, enforced justice, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of a sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received back their dead by resurrection. Some were tortured, refusing to accept release so that they might rise again to a better life. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned. They were sawn in two. They were killed with a sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy wandering about in the deserts and mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And all these, though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better for us, that apart from us they should not be made perfect. Now let's read Hebrews 12.1. Hello, Doris. Good to see you today. Not see you, but I guess see your face right there in the corner. There we go. Therefore, verse 12, 1, therefore, since we are surrounded, because therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run, let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. 
I'm going to read that verse one more time. Therefore, because since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. I was captured by those words as I was studying this out this week. The great cloud of witnesses. The great cloud of witnesses in the light of all who have gone before us, remembering the stories, uh, their stories as living proof that those who put their faith in God will not be put to shame following in their footsteps. You know, yesterday we sang, I see the evidence of your goodness. And every time we sing that song, I feel like my heart is about to explode out of my chest. And you know, Hebrews 11 was literally a chapter written just showing evidence, just showing us like, look, look at Sarah, look at Abel, look at Noah, look at Moses, look at Isaac, look at Jacob, look at Abraham, look at their faith and look what God did in their lives. Look at, even as it said in these verses, we just read the, the, the mouths of lions that were stopped, the justice that was in a was enforced, the promises that were obtained, the kingdoms that were conquered, the fire that was quenched, the sword that was escaped, the weakness that that brought about strength. Like look at their lives. They are evidence to us. We are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, lives that prove to us that if we will put our faith in God, we will not be put to shame. The Old Testament, the New Testament is full of stories of people that we can look to and say, listen, the God of the Bible is the God of today. And when they put their faith in God, they were not put to shame. And here's what I know about my God. Hebrews says that he was the same yesterday as he is today and he will forever be. So that means that if it worked for them, it'll work for me. God will be faithful to his word. He will keep his promises to me. Their lives are evidence to us of his goodness, his faithfulness, and his reality. And knowing this, seeing their stories, reading their stories, we are encouraged to lay aside everything that holds us back everything that holds us back and to run with endurance the race that is set before us. We are encouraged not to give up. Their lives are to be hope to us. Hope to us. Don't give up. Whatever you're going through, whatever you're facing, whatever you go through in this life, don't give up. Run your race with endurance. Why? Because we have a cloud of witnesses. We have people that we can go back to their stories and read again and again and again. Reminders, evidence of God's faithfulness, of his goodness, of his reality, of the truth of his promises. And the next time that you want to give up, that you want to throw in the towel, that you want to just be done, that you're tired of waiting or trusting. I want you to remember the blessing that followed Noah's obedience. I want you to remember the baby that Sarah held in her arms, just like God said she would. I want you to remember Moses's mother and how she saved his life by having the faith to let go and trust God. I want you to remember Israel walking across the Red Sea. I want you to remember Daniel and the mouths of the lions being shut and his life being spared because of his faith in God. I want you to remember those that have gone before us, Abraham, how he was willing to go to the unknown and what awaited him there. I want you to remember those things because God is who he says he is. God is who he says he is. I say that, I think, in every Monday morning devotion that I do because I just want us to get it. God is who he says he is. He's who he says he is. And the God of the Bible is the God of today. He is still the same God. He is still able. He is still the I am that I am. He is still Jehovah Jireh, our provider, Jehovah Rapha, our healer. That is who he is. And that will never change. That will never change. I love the scripture in James. I'm going to go there. James one. If I can find it. 
There it is. James. It says in James that there is no shadow of turning with him. And I've really been thinking about that. There is no shadow of turning. And I researched that and I studied that out and I realized that when he said that, he was talking about how we are in constant motion and in constant, you know, rotation orbit around the sun. And, and there's always, there's season change. There's days, morning and night, morning and night. And there's change happening all around us all the time. But in our God, there is no shadow of turning. There is no shadow of turning. It doesn't matter what day it is. It doesn't matter if it's morning or night. It doesn't matter if it's afternoon. It doesn't matter if it's spring, summer, winter, fall, what month it is, what year it is. It doesn't matter. He does not change. There is no shadow of turning in him. And I pray that that would encourage you and that would just bring hope to your heart. And the next time that you start to to question, the next time that you want to give up, remember, there is no shadow of turning in our God. Our Father, He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's exactly who He says He is right now in this moment, as He was five minutes ago, 10 minutes ago, 10,000 years ago. He is the same. He doesn't change. There is hope today. Have faith. And then I want to encourage you to do this. Not only do I want you the next time you want to give up to go to Hebrews 11, to read through scripture, to look at the stories, the evidence of God's goodness, his reality and his faithfulness and his power. But I also want you, I want you to tell your stories. I want you to be a witness of God's faithfulness. I want you to tell your story of faith to someone and be living proof to them of what God can do. I encourage you, post it on social media. We need more posts like that on Facebook. Post it on social media. Post it on Facebook. Post it on Instagram. Post it on Twitter in little tiny lines over and over throughout the day. Whatever you use, whatever you post on, share your testimony. People that you meet, tell them about the goodness of God. Tell them how God has moved in your life, how he's healed you and saved you and set you free. Tell your testimony. Be a witness of the reason that it's totally worth it to trust God and have faith in him. Share your story. Be living proof for someone else. You never know how your story is going to encourage them to keep going and run their race with endurance. Maybe they felt like giving up and the moment they hear your story, there's hope in them. Hope to keep believing, to keep trusting. Maybe you were a prodigal that your parents prayed for and you returned. Share that story because the mom of the prodigal needs to hear that there is hope. Maybe you are battling through sickness and you have found healing. Share that story because now people that are battling through sickness, they need that hope. They need that encouragement. Our lives are evidence. We are evidence of the goodness of God, of the power of his salvation. We are evidence of who he is and that he's still doing what he did back then now. So share that story. Share your testimony. Be bold about it. I love Romans where he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of Christ unto salvation. Paul knew the power of the gospel. He knew what it meant to people who were perishing. And I encourage you, you know too. And so do I. And we have a story to tell. We have stories to tell. I can think of so many from my own life that I could tell and I could be a witness to somebody else, cheering them on and saying, don't give up because here's what I know about God. He made this promise and he was faithful to it. And he kept his word in my life and he has been faithful and he's my healer and he's my savior and he's my deliverer. And when I was bound in low self-esteem and when I was bound by insecurity, he set me free. He broke me free out of all of that. And he made me brave and he made me bold and, and, and you can share your story and what, what it can do, how it can encourage the people around you. So that's my challenge for you as we wrap up these Monday morning devotions together. I encourage you to share your story. Post it here in the comments so people that watch this video throughout the week can be scrolling through and seeing testimony after testimony. Share it in your social media. Share it with your friends. Call somebody today. Write a letter. 
you know, mail a postcard, say, God, who needs encouraged? Who needs a witness of your faithfulness today? And share your story with them. It Maybe it's in the supermarket and you're waiting in the grocery line. Look for opportunities to share your story. You are evidence of God's faithfulness and his goodness. Let the world know he is everything that he says he is. And he does everything that he says he will do. Have an awesome week.